episode of Cinematic Suffering. I am Jason. I'm Clay. And today we are reviewing 13 Demons. That's right. Uh, the uh, The premise of our little podcast here is that we're going down A to Z in the Netflix horror movie category and suffering cinematically through each feature. And this is the second one up. The second title with 13 in the title. Yes, we have to go through all the numbers first before we can actually hit A. Yeah, yeah, which is uh, it's gonna it's gonna be tough, but uh, we'll yeah. we'll get there. So, uh, Jason, do you want to say what tell everybody what the premise of this one was about? This movie, this Sh- fine cinematic feature. Sure. Yeah. So I, I didn't actually get to watch it until late last night. Probably uh, I stayed up and watched it till about one in the mor- one in the morning. <laughs> yeah. uh, one of those things I just had to keep putting off until the last minute. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. So it starts off. It, the premise is that there's this board game that's that's I guess possessed by the devil or demons. The devil was never actually mentioned, but it's 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 a bad board game. It was, <laughs> it's supposed to take on the hype that that happened back in the '80s about the you know how Dungeons and Dragons influenced people and uh, what is that one movie that Tom Hanks starred in? Oh, uh, I was trying to remember that one. Uh, you know, uh, I I I half acidly searched for it and then gave up. I forget. Tom Hanks would have helped narrow it down. I forget. But I you're think, right. It was a cautionary tale about the dangers of Dungeons and Dragons and how it leads to suicide. Yeah, uh, mazes and monsters. I think that's what yes, it was. yes, that's yes. It. Uh, yeah, so that's what uh, this is kind of, and I guess, and I'm guessing the the movie kind of takes place in the 80s. I didn't really realize that until. Maybe about a quarter of the way in. At some point, we see somebody dialing on a rotary phone. So, yeah, I, it, I had to actually – I suffered through this thing twice. Oh, did you? Wow. Yes, yes. I, <laughs> I, I, I wanted to pick up on every uh, subtle piece of metaphor and subtext. So, yeah. Right, right. So, the, it's – I mean, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try so hard not to rag on this movie so much because you can tell <laughs> it's a low budget feature. It's it's done by guys who kind of know what they're talking about, but yeah, the, the I, execution of it was left to be something to be left to be desired or whatever. I'm trying to get out there. Uh, yeah, they. Um, I got the idea that uh, like sitting around an apartment, smoking a lot of reefer, and and playing board games is not a far stretch for these cats. I think that they just started filming and then winged the script. So. Uh, yeah, uh, if you if you watch the trailer, and I'll play the trailer now. The trailer kind of gives everything away. Uh, it, it, there's no real mystery to this movie. It's an hour and thirteen minutes, and from start to finish, there's no not going to be a surprise ending. There's no, no. there's there twists and turns. It's just <laughs> it's just <laughs> telling a story of guys who get either obsessed or they get possessed. It's one of those things. Um, so let me go ahead and play this trailer here. Police are blaming the recent murders on the resurgence of the fantasy role-playing board game 13 Demons. The game was banned 30 years ago due to excessively violent murders perpetrated by players who were convinced they were living in the game. What the hell is this, dude? 13 Demons. Some Jumanji sh- The body of an unidentified man was found in the parking lot of an office park on the southeast side. Sources say his face was so badly beaten he will have to be identified by fingerprints or dental records. I will catch you. And I will slay you. What is your mission? To rid the realm of the 13 demons of the apocalypse. All right, so that was yeah. ex- that was a exciting trailer. Yeah, it's not a game. <laughs> it's not a game, as it's uh, been pointed out near the end, especially. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, you know, there's they've they padded this thing out real well with a lot of repetition of dialogue. It's a got a game. It's a game. It's not a game. It is not a game. Uh, 
God. Okay. So let's uh, let's start from the beginning. <laughs> yes, from the very beginning. Like first off, let's let's give everybody a quick lowdown of who's responsible for this thing. Right. Is uh, written directed by Daniel Felicki and uh, stars Stephen Gray, Michael Cunningham, Jackson Nzinga, and Daniel Felicki. So Felicki. Valiki. Right. You know you're in trouble when the same guy writing, directing it, and starring in it is is kind of all over this thing. It's a very auteur film for Mr. Faliki. Yeah, I, I was going to point out that uh, Faliki does star in in this movie, and I, I kind of broke down each one. There's three guys in here, and each one of them are kind of like a prototype for nerd. So yeah, we have yeah. we have the stereotypical nerd. I call him the SN. That and that's Faliki's character, the the guy with the glasses and the 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 all you know the nerdy appearance, right? Yeah, yeah, he's the guy that you can tell that that uh, he's got a vast collection of role playing games in his house, <laughs> right? And then uh, you have the cool nerd. Yeah, the, the the guy that looks like he might be from somewhere kind of exotic. One of his parents are are from somewhere interesting. Right, and you think you just kind of get hung up in all this because it's just uh, like a, a chance in life that he found himself rooming with uh, a couple of other dorks, and they just kind of ro- roped him into the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, he approaches his nerdism kind of ironically in a way. He's that guy. Like, right. I still want to get laid. It was his vibe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then we have the final neckbeard nerd. Who yes, <laughs> who's just – he's so – all of them are so poorly drawn, but like – did do these guys have names? I I don't remember the film like helping us much with who yeah, they are. Yeah, they they uh, the credits do list their names, but it's not oh. like they have regular names. So Stephen Gray, um, I'm not sure which one that is. He might be the the cool nerd. Was Tor <laughs> was Tor cool of Darkhaven? And then uh, Michael. They're make them up names. Yeah, yeah. So Michael Cunningham, I, know, I think his neckbeard nerd was Ablesworth ah. of the High Wind, and. <laughs> Feliki was Thomas of Belmont. <laughs> Player one, two, and three is the amount of effort that IMDb put into it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the film inexplicably starts off with a quote from William Howard Taft, who is the 27th president of the United States. And I could read the quote to you, but it has absolutely nothing to do with <laughs> any thematic things going on in the movie. It's not ironic. It's just, it, it seems like that they just randomly picked a quote out it's baffling i uh i i noted that the first thing when i saw it when it that splashed on the screen i was scratching my head going why is it did taft play a lot of board games <laughs> <laughs> was this a normal thing that he did that they do they know something about william howard taft that no one else knows and uh I, yeah that random quote was just yeah. weird uh, I mean, it's it's like a quote that says, like, I can make up a better quote, like you are alive until you're you're dead. And then <laughs> that's just some that's just some guy that's not that's undeserving of being quoted. Yeah. If all the people you're going to quote, you quote Taft. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I, I had to look him up. I, I'm very poor at, at history. I was not. I did not study real hard but i was like who william howard Taft sounds familiar it sounds presidential well one of the one of the one-term presidents that we've had i think <laughs> yeah, he, did, he did poorly at this point at this point in the movie which is obviously just the beginning i had to go and look how long it was because <laughs> i'm like if we're dealing with this i i just needed to get a kind of semblance so it was an hour it is an hour and 13 minutes i don't i'm not even sure that because sometimes like uh, movie you know, like Sundance. <laughs> if you wanted to submit this movie to Sundance, there has to be a time limit on the yeah. movies to be considered a uh, a full movie. So an hour and a half, and eight or eighty something minutes is usually the standard. I'm not sure if this would be considered. Might be considered just a long short film. Uh, yeah. Some somehow it got through Netflix demanding high standards. <laughs> yeah, They're they've lofty got, standard. They've got amazing standards. Netflix. As they we, do. Like is like is it? <laughs> are there any five minute gaps of darkness? Because we got yelled at for that for eating up bandwidth with that one. I think that <laughs> I think if it's a movie, if it can be deemed a film, you'll you're golden on Netflix. <laughs> yes. Don't give up on your dreams, people. Thirteen Demons was made. <laughs> Oh boy. Okay. Well, I like I, I I really want to not rag on it too hard because <laughs> I I because uh, I, I, I've been playing a lot of board games recently. I've been getting back into 
Dungeons and Dragons. So, you know, when you first suggested, or you just suggested, you said the next movie is going to be 13 Demons and it's about yeah. an RPG and board games. And I was like, oh, that sounds really cool because I've been playing them myself. And, uh, oh, we're, we're, you know, like it, it, me too. I uh, play Zombicide quite regularly. Um, you know, like uh, role playing games were a big part of my early teen years, and I even played them in college. So believe me, I'm not coming from it from t- too much of a place <laughs> judgment either. Right, right. And I think you and I both agree that, you know, I really want to. I. <laughs> <laughs> There, there are faults with this movie. It's obvious yeah. there are faults. Yeah. Uh, there, there. It's a low budget feat. It's a low budget movie. They, they obviously didn't have a lot of, of budget to work with. Um, I think for... million dollars is what the, allegedly the budget is for this. Okay, that's just way too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, you know good and well that bales of marijuana were purchased. That got eaten up in the catering budget. <laughs> no, nah, yeah, I wouldn't doubt that was real weed they're uh, smoking in the movie too. I'm... I imagine. I'm surprised you didn't hear the cameraman say, "Man, your smoke is going to mess up my camera." Oh, <laughs> uh, at the beginning, we see the, it's a police interrogation, and uh, two of the guys we have Netbeard and Cool Nerd, uh, both covered in blood, being interrogated separately by the same two officers. Yeah, they look like they're fresh from a Guar concert. Right, and and I'm just trying to think that they're both getting asked the same questions. There's the same. F- fat police guy standing behind him with a, a, a <laughs> like a some kind of ar 110 <laughs> i think it looks like yeah. some flesh shredding device that most cops unless you're you know stop splintering a door in some horrible drug bust with gangsters everywhere i don't see the necessity for that gun but. yeah and i don't think that's really kind of protocol when you're in an interrogation <laughs> <laughs> it's Let's get the fattest officer we can find, put him in a, squeeze him into a, a bulletproof vest, and then make sure he wears his best khakis. <laughs> I know, and make sure that, that our suspect, who we've caught red-handed, there's no, there, like, you don't need to do a lot of heavy lifting as far as the interrogation process here. <laughs> <laughs> the cop lies, uh, or picks up one of this these things and says, this, what is this? And the guy is like, one of the you know, it doesn't matter both nerds were like that is the sword of benethril or benedril or whatever it, the fuck they were calling it and it's just obviously a pipe yeah <laughs> or a, a piece pipe. or a stick of wood and and of course they're lost in this weird de- delusion and yeah and they're speaking with a uh, comically uh uh like renfest kind of accents or whatever there's a, oh, <laughs> how well. dare thee insult my weapon that is the hammer of thunderbolts it looks like a bloody brain spattered pipe <laughs> yeah they, they uh and this is just an example of uh of not a good not a good very good beginning just because <laughs> first we have a howard taft quote and then we jump into <laughs> This interrogation where we know the two guys are already guilty. And, oh, yeah. Take and, a take a hard right right into, uh, you know, your boilerplate kind of police interrogation. But uh, they've quit in both of our characters and they're so blood spattered that I didn't even realize that they were different dudes at first. But because they're mm-hmm. both affecting this old timey Renfest accent and they're both covered head to toe in gore. I don't know how they. To got so many uh, victims under their belt before getting caught. These guys are not clean in their in their wet works. Yeah, I was uh, I was a little yeah that that's a good point that uh, I was kind of confused a little bit there at the beginning too. It was like who is this the same guy? No, no, these are different guys. Okay, got it, got it. <laughs> you know they both enjoy their stoner rock, which you know I'm, I I empathize, but um, we, you know we we quickly go from not quick enough, but we go from the police and. <laughs> interrogation to their backstory where it shows our uh the director mr faliki faliki yeah mr daniel faliki his character the nerdy glasses guy barges into the to the apartment of our main characters and they're in the midst of geeked them in progress like the one guy is playing dragon's lair on the Nintendo, which well, immediately I started. Well, I didn't. I actually thought about this. I pondered this <laughs> for the last week. This this stylistic choice. Okay. That game is, 
you know, infamous in game collector circles as being the most broken ass, annoying as fuck, right. poorly designed game ever. He calls it Dragon Lair, which I guess is a is a is a real sneaky way to get around the legal <laughs> issues of just naming Dragon's Lair. Oh yeah, yeah. And the Dragon's Lair on the Nintendo was absolutely horrible. No one could get through it. I, I I've actually geeked out and watched YouTube channel play videos and people have gotten through it but it's i remember having it as a kid and just being so frustrated because i thought oh i love the the animated the don is it don bluth don bluth yeah yeah the thing that was in the arcade and i was like oh i'm gonna get this on nintendo because both would be comparable right yeah Um, no no Um, but yeah yeah (laughs) i noticed that he was playing that but he wasn't really playing it because it was playing in the background when he wasn't even looking or touching a controller (laughs) (laughs) which is immediately it's established that that haunted stuff surrounds these guys i don't think that the 13 demons was even necessary there's obviously (laughs) poltergeists in the room and the 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 weird uh, decor that they had in the back they had a planet of the apes poster the the tim burton version they had a all dogs (laughs) go to heaven poster (laughs) And you see what it is is uh, we enjoy unwatchable movies so much. I thought, why don't we make one as well? Yeah. And we got to think that these movies didn't come out in the eighties. They came well. I don't know. Well, All dogs go to heaven, but I know that Tim Burton one didn't come out until early two thousands. <laughs> <laughs> Some continuity errors right from the get. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um. So so Feliki comes busting into the apartment. I'm not sure if they all sp- are supposed to live together or if they, you know what's going on whose apartment it is i guess it doesn't really the story yeah i guess it doesn't really matter and he's he's flipping out about 13 demons and we kind of get an established backstory of how it is a cursed game it was made like 20 years ago and from the time that this is supposed to happen, I guess. And Yeah, yeah. and as and as any teacher in cinema, anybody that's been through film school <laughs> will be told, Don't show your audience, tell them. Let's tell them <laughs> right from the outset that this is a haunted game and it makes people kill other people because it, it immediately drives them crazy and they burned these in a pyre in outrage <laughs> over all the piles of dead bodies. Let's play it. And it's like, okay, we've <laughs> we've been told <laughs> How the rest of the movie is going to progress. Thanks, movie. Exactly. And at this point, I looked at the screen time yet again to see how long I had to go. <laughs> we were only at the 1730 marks. So. It's like, wow, I'm in a time time bubble here, a time loop. I know. I, 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 we already knew what was going to happen. I think the I, – I, I can appreciate the film, the, the guy's – passion for maybe board games and that that yeah. genre and wanted to do something but it's like man man uh i think storytelling 101 here could could have helped a lot oh i know just just basic just read a book read any book read <laughs> <laughs> Oh goodness! It can be. It, it can have pictures in it because I, I'm sure that these guys aren't big on just. I don't know. Maybe they do. They were big readers. They're, they're not. They weren't good, great storytellers. But you know, and and I'm sure we'll discuss this more towards the end. But I didn't hate it either. I know that, but yeah. oddly, I didn't hate it. Like I, I resent it for not hating it more in a way. Like this. <laughs> <just, laughs> yeah, I do too. Dude. I, I'm, I'm, I, I wanted to bag on it so much but i could see it was really kind of a, a labor of love for the guys so i'm i i can get behind that and uh, so we're just kind of pick nitpicking here which is <laughs> you know that's what we're going to do anyways with these movies <laughs> it's, it's inevitable it's but... inevitable well i mean the, so immediately our, our our friends start our our three main characters start playing this game it's established with you know the the subtlety of balls on your chin, the the evilness of this game, and then they start playing it, and uh, if they take the pieces out and they're making fun of it, <laughs> they're oh, like our our cool guy. <laughs> he's he's somewhat cooler than the other two. I, yeah. I feel and he he drops a piece on the board and then it immediately writes himself. And this is the most offensive part in the whole movie for me. He's like, "Whoa, that's some Jumanji shit." And it's like, <laughs> yeah, because I don't get it at this point. Like it's <laughs> it's already just so painfully obvious that we we're dealing with a haunted game, and they have the nuts, the just the appalling audacity to to reference jumanji yeah and uh not only that but we have find another continuity area where this is supposed to be in the 80s i guess and jumanji obviously wasn't made until the mid 90s so yeah 
Yeah, I mean, I <laughs> our friends are time travelers. I think that there's some there's yeah. something we're missing. There's they something. found uh, a great tool in Thirteen Demons of time travel. They're really set up for I, this. And now that I think about it, maybe they're just hipsters. Like I don't like using modern technology. All the EMF waves kind of hurt my creative function. So I use a rotary phone to call it. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to I was trying to determine whether that was their process that whether they're just hipsters and they're just using like nostalgic stuff for ironic purposes. Uh, but then I, this thing was supposed to have happened where the 13 demons, the board game was, you know, it was 20 or 30 years in the past and I was trying to add up the time and it, I think it was adding up to around the mid eighties. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. The timeline's kind of, it, it's, it's kind of all over the place with that. Um, it seems to want to elicit that uh, a nostalgia for that time, which I, you know, it, it's debatable whether it even kind of sort of got in the ballpark or right. But, um, you know, I can I kind of have a, a strong sense of nostalgia for that time, the gaming and all that shit. Sure, so. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, OK, so we have. Uh, yeah. So that we see the the little uh, man piece, what a <laughs> board piece, <laughs> man piece. <laughs> right itself and they and so they immediately know that they're dealing with a haunted game it's it's does everything but growl menacingly and drip blood and it's uh, you know again i don't i don't want to be overly critical either but they could have put some effort into the fabrication of this game it looks like it was painted that morning <laughs> in in uh, like craft paint from hobby lobby it's, it's just <laughs> You can see some serious swipes. The color, the color palette is non-existent, and it there's the game doesn't look like it actually works in any kind of way. But. Yeah, I was thinking that there. I, another thing I was pointing out, I was pointing out to myself was like they really like to smell this game a lot. Oh my god, they just they they they're sitting there. I, people in the midst of a three day coke binge don't sniff that much. <laughs> I get it. It fucking smells. Do you guys smell that? Does it smell worse as we're playing it? I think it smells bad. Do you smell that? And like close-ups, unnecessary close-ups where you can see it, the inhalations and and the compressions of their nostrils. It's like, I get it. It fucking stinks. <laughs> I know. And they, they really kind of hammer that point home. And it never, of course, you know, makes any difference as, as it progresses throughout the the movie. They say it smells like burned leaves. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, spoiler that burnt leaves burning any anything that would even slightly kind of lead you back to burnt leaves. Nope. Mm -mm. <laughs> and I've always I had a fondness for the smell of burnt leaves. I mean, it reminds me of a nice fall day. Yeah, it, there's there's it, it would be nice or it, I, I don't know that it would be nice, but I could understand if they said this thing smells moldy. God, where did you find this thing? I, I, that would that kind of make more sense. But uh, so they start playing and they play and they play and they play <laughs> and then they play. I, we, they play the game almost in real time. Oh, that's what it really it, it, it felt like that, didn't it? Um, yeah, there was a because, again, I watched this movie probably, at, you know, by twelve fifteen a.m., I'd been out camping this weekend, and then I went to a birthday party at the uh, at the end of the day. So I'd been out, you know, in the sun, and you know, just I'm exhausted. I'm like, Bill, I need to watch this movie like now. So <laughs> I can't fake my way through this. I, I can't fake my way. So I had to. So I put it on. I was like, okay, it's only an hour and thir thirteen minutes. I can get through this, but. <laughs> they were playing this game almost in real time, and they were, like, rubbing their eyes, speaking very slowly, yaw mumbling. yawning, mumbling. It was making me tired, more tired just <laughs> watching them do that. And my eyes were getting more and more heavy as they were kept stalling, and, like, the cool nerd is reading, because he's the one who's, like, one of the first ones who hits, like, this demon gate. And yeah. And he's like, and you... <laughs> hit <laughs> the and i'm just oh god please finish this line of dialogue you wake up and the credits are rolling i've done that on many a night that's what i was trying to avoid <laughs> <laughs> the credits looked okay yeah so they um is this when we get our first dream sequence yes. the red filter dream sequence which um I've never used After Effects, but I'm pretty sure that what they did was pretty easy. I, that's a boilerplate effect. There's this—it's just 
there's bottom fog, like the distracting, real flat kind of after effects. And then there's some wiggly uh, qualities <laughs> going on to them, like they're in a dream world. And <laughs> it's a it's an epileptic epileptics nightmare uh yeah if, if you're susceptible to blinking lights and falling into seizures you do not want to watch this because yes and you definitely don't want to have a seizure over 13 demons it's no, not no. worth it you know see the incredibles too maybe a little <laughs> bit more but... yeah the and uh so cool nerd is now decked out in some kind of the, the his golden paladin gear because that's what yeah. the heroes are called in the game the golden paladins Yes, and uh, the 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 screen is still so murky and everything, so you can't really <laughs> see how cheap the costume is. You can see it is kind of cheap, but I like you can feel I, the cheapness. You can feel the cheapness, but uh, this is where I'll give them props. Where they they use these effects to their you know they got a low budget, they're gonna try to use everything they can, and I thought I thought it was effective when you see this goofy ass demon lurking around and. Cool. Yeah, he's got he's got big uh, finger extensions, and he's he's got vaguely pointy, uh, goblin-y ears. So he, you know, I mean, in, in the context of the movie, he works as a monster. But um, which we'll find out soon enough that uh, when they say thirteen demons, what we mean is one demon copied twelve, 12 times. times. Yeah, <laughs> the it, he sneaks up on this this demon. And again, we don't really see, we just kind of like to see the shadowy outline of the demon. We get the yeah. vague impression of horns and stuff like that. But he stands behind the demon for what feels like 30 seconds <laughs> thinking, OK, just stab him, stab him, yeah, stab him, a, stab yeah, him. This... Why are you waiting? Stab him. Stop. Oh, yeah. An hour and 13 minutes. I guess in the final cut, they were like, we were going to take this out. But it turns out we. <laughs> We needed to get this fucker to Sundance, just like you said. <laughs> so he winds up finally uh, stabbing the demon and killing it, and that's when he wakes up, right? Everyone, yes, all, everyone all wakes three up. Of our, all, all three of our heroes wake up, and here I was confused again because Neckbeard Guy is in a wheelchair yes. for some baffling reason, and later on in the movie he's just walking around, so I was like, <laughs> All right, you disrespectful prick. What do you got? <laughs> do, you, do you have the things that people with muscular dystrophy have to use sometimes too? You know, right, right. Faster. I was thinking the same goddamn exact thing because I saw him when they woke up. He's in a wheelchair, and I was like, oh, okay, dude's in the wheelchair. No, I had no issue with that. And then, yeah, like you said, later on, you see him standing up. Standing up, and I'm like, wait a minute! I thought he was wheelchair bound. Oh, that yeah, that, that was close. I almost had empathy for this dickhead. Yeah, so. I'm glad we avoid we dodged that bullet. Uh, they all wake so, up. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, uh, they all wake up, and they're just covered in sweat, just like someone just dumped water on all of them, though. That was one of the first, and throughout the feature, I was just like, are they? Did these guys bathe in Astro Glide? Why are they so oily? <laughs> It, it was just, yeah, it was kind of a weird kind of vibe. I was like, why are they so wet? Did, did, just open a window or turn on the <laughs> air condition. It's <laughs> What do you live in Louisiana in the middle of summer? Yeah. Oh, on the news, on the news when they wake up, the the news person is saying that someone has been killed. And, of course, and someone in, in their delirium in the middle of the night has drawn three suspicious looking inverted crosses, which match the box art. Uh, uh, it looks like in blood or in some thick, viscous ketchup or something on the TV screen. <laughs> on the at, TV at, screen, yeah. At that point, it'd be like, you know that you need to ease up on your party, and if you don't <laughs> remember doing that. <laughs> the Yeah, I mean, the, the three inverted crosses are on the television set, and I didn't kind of put that together, the game board. I, I, did, I guess I didn't pay too much attention to the game board, uh, or the box, I should say. But yeah, uh, I look at these things. <laughs> I'm glad you're here to like pick up on the little subtleties of these movies. Because <laughs> God forbid we miss the nuance. The uh, so we're at the 26 minute mark, and <laughs> <laughs> it already feels like an hour and ten. And they continue the game, and there's some some board. I guess some board pieces changed color. Um, they, they're making they're commenting on. Oh, when did this change color? Or, but I don't know what yeah. they're talking about because I. The colors on the board just look the same to me. Yeah, well, I mean, everything's run through whatever filter they've got. Like this, is, it it bounces pretty violently between blue light filter to to red light filter, so you can't really tell what's going on with the game. And they, you know, they don't really want to show it that much because there's not much there to see. I, you know, maybe it's because I've played so many board games. I just pointed at it and went like, that doesn't work. There's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> there's 
no tiles on there that I know where to go to. The color scheme doesn't help me. This is not a functional game. And, and they all started off very confused about the game, just like we were. Like, this is dumb. How are you supposed to play this game? And uh, uh, Feliki's character just starts reading from the manual, and that's all we really know. I'm not really sure why they're rolling a dice for each thing. <laughs> There's nothing like that is really explained. Cause, but, you know, that's just probably the board game nerd in me saying... Yeah, we have to have purpose for this. Why is a die being rolled? And why why is a die being rolled? And it, the board is so small; it looks like a six roll would send you right off of the mm -hmm. edge of the board into in, into nothingness. It's right. just it it's not a functional game. I was sitting there thinking that this is how much of a dork I am. I was sitting there <laughs> thinking like, well, they could have just reached out to the Kingdom Death Monster people. That, that <laughs> you've got all the pieces; they're already creepy and irreverent and and awful. You could even have somebody paint them up real nice, and I'm sure that those guys guys would have at least been somewhat receptive like yeah you, we can you put your uh, our, our game in your movie that'd be cool or find somebody that would I, yeah. if you go to the gaming store there's games galore somebody will work with you even though you're a director of this thing yeah and if you go up there and say hey we got a budget we're for a million dollars and we're doing this game <laughs> They'd be like, I bet shit. Yeah, I'll pay your. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, man. I mean, can I get a credit in there? Of course, you can get a credit. Do you get people to do that immediately at any gaming store? Oh, Those absolutely. guys don't have a lot going on. <laughs> uh, so we see the game kind of unfold uh, as each guy reads from their manual. You see them kind of all descend and get worse. Sleepy. Yeah, sleepy. More sleepy. Is that correct? I mean, again, this is. The, the well, more... they they kind of go they kind of go into sleepiness, but you're right. Up until then, when they're playing the game, they start grousing at each other more, and and they start affecting that accent a little bit more. The uh, the Renfest uh, affect. Right. So so uh, super nerd Fleeky starts chastising Neckbeard nerd for mispronouncing words and saying you're not doing your, this realm honor or something like that. He's really getting into it. Um, yeah, which is is supposed to be a way to tell the audience, yeah, they're starting to get possessed by the game. But really, anybody that's that's been around board game people knows that people grousing about the rules and being snappy at one another and talking like idiots is just kind of par for the course. It's par for the course, and there there's people who LARP out there that are more serious. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> like, put some... Uh, you know the LARP people were... Their eyes were exploding. Like, put some effort into the costume! <laughs> I, I did, like... A, Oh, oh, we gotta. We this is kind of leads up to the the famous, um, who took my dice? Uh, yes. Um, scene that we have going on here. So after Feliki is, I'm I'm calling him Feliki because he's the only one I really know of the group. Yes. With. So he starts chastising, and all of a sudden he's he asks, I can't find my dice. Who took my dice? Did who you take my dice? Did you take my dice? Do who not bring this honor upon this group. <laughs> yeah, so Neckbeard is like, I didn't take your dice, and the cool nerd is in the middle of him just looking back and forth, and it goes back to Fleeky, you took my dice! Thieves uh, flock together, a flock of thieves, or something like that. Thick as thieves, Thick as thieves, are. yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then, as the, the, so this, I think this convers this little argument went on for a, a couple of minutes, it felt like. and Yeah, and that, that Feliki really, I, I'm convinced that he told all of his actors, like, I'm just going to use the best take. Just say it a bunch of times. Just keep saying it. Don't don't wait for me to say cut in between. Did you take my dice? Did you take me? Okay, you're going to cut all that out, right? You're going to use <laughs> the best one. Yeah, man, we're going to fix this in the post edit. <laughs> uh, but no, they had to pad the time out just a little bit more. So. Uh, stretch Every like taffy everything stays <laughs> nothing gets cut <laughs> uh, yeah and so it, it, that we have this big argument on who took my dice and these and then feel like he looks in his his little front pocket and he's like oh Oh, here it is. <laughs> oh, it's right on the board. I couldn't see it because everything is the same color on this board. <laughs> so he found his dice. That uh, that situation was resolved without violence. And, and with, th with 13 apologies, he thir 13 demons, so he, he apologized about 13 times. And I, I tell you, that was such a suspenseful scene that I was holding my breath so I finally could breathe <laughs> a sigh of relief that it was over. <laughs> Oh God! I th thought something was gonna happen here for a second. I thought we were gonna get a, just a sprinkling of exposition, but nay. Yeah, I was waiting for that uh, that exciting moment to pop out, but uh, just no. and they continued on with their game, and I think they fall asleep again. And but this time, uh, th now I'll give them props for this next part because Fleeky's character, uh, they they he, they got him really well made up, to in my opinion. Um, 
with the outfit and the, like the armor and everything or or no he's in the real world and he's he's flipping the fuck out he's Is in that the what re- you're talking yeah about? he's in the yeah. real world flipping the fuck out he's got these my favorite part of the movie by the way yeah this is my favorite part of the movie too so he's sweaty he's got rings under his eyes he's got these weird blue contacts in like he's possessed and he starts and- yeah. I have to give it to him. Like he really did seem a little bit unhinged. If you're if you're looking for the one redeeming bit of acting in the movie, I think he delivered it here. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I was actually sitting here in you know not enthralled or entranced, but I was like, oh, this is pretty interesting. They really did a good job with making him up and the way he was. He called his mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he called his mom on the rotary phone before that, and it, it left this this chilling message about how I've I've learned my life's purpose, and I'm getting ready to go. If I don't come back tonight, like all the stuff, it's like, oh shit, Junior didn't take his his meds. <laughs> yeah, and it did, he, he delivered that really well, and then he goes off in search of his demon that he needs to slay. Yeah, and he finds some dude wrenching a car, and and. Offers to do battle with him. He's dressed hilariously, and in his imagination, he's wearing full regalia, all this armor. But it's just, it's it's like a platter. It's his mom cheese platter on his chest, and like a a colander on his head or something. And he's he's holding just a rubber mallet that looks like you could hit somebody pretty firmly about five times, and they would just get annoyed. But... Yeah, exactly. I was noticing that too. But uh, the 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 make uh, just the the pots and pans, the absurdity of it all was really funny. Uh, it, was. It, it was funny, but at the same time, I saw where they're going. They're transposing. You know that he's in another world in his head, and this is just yeah. what he's doing. And I, I thought that was pretty effective. Um, the the guys at the uh, I'm putting in air quotes garage, yes, uh, which it, is it, obviously it, just a storage container. <laughs> 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 and this guy's wrenching the car and I'm I'm not much into cars but I know that 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 you don't need a socket wrench for the battery <laughs> but he's, just, he's just twisting this thing at a vague part of the uh in the motor and then the, he's offered to do battle and he's like dude get out of here I'm uh, we're getting ready to close up oh you want to do battle with me and they face off in one of the most hilarious moments of the movie for me they face off in this completely side side by side uh fighting game like old school fighting game <laughs> All they were missing is the life bars over each character, like Barista versus Fishhead. <laughs> it would have been perfect. Yeah, they, they're just kind of stop. Yeah, just stop. That's they're all just they're just staring each other down. And... Yeah, facing off. One guy's got a tire iron. The other guy's got his rubber hammer. And, but we don't actually see the fight, do we? Uh, no, we don't see the fight, and that's a, a big disappointment because it, it 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 looks like they just hit each other at the same time, and you see both of them kind of fall down at the same time. And I'm thinking, I'm pretty sure that Crowbar would have definitely won out <laughs> over the <laughs> Rubber crowbar's Mallet. Crowbar's got way more HP than Rubber Mallet. Yeah, that's a that's a special sword of singing or whatever the hell. <laughs> <laughs> Compared to a Rubber Mallet, just uh, so both you see both hands hit the ground. The 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 guy who was holding the 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 Crowbar, his hands bloody for some reason. <laughs> And yeah, I guess he he somehow busted this dude's head wide open, or right. something. The only way you could get that much blood spray. And uh, <laughs> the, this, so they both fall down, and then I think we go back to the game board, and you see that piece that I guess he was playing, even though they all were kind of interchangeable pieces, just kind of fall over. Yeah, the magnet wore out in it. <laughs> <laughs> Clay, I, I think was it's I th- like it's either mysticism or magnets. I mean, <laughs> let's get Shaggy too dope in on the case. He can he can explain it. To <laughs> uh, the uh, the other two guys don't really care. It looks like they they, <laughs> they kind of just seem to be unmoved by. I guess it's it's you can have two players without affecting the gameplay that much. You they know? did they did say you're supposed to have four players at the beginning. Remember that. They did. They did. It works better with four players. Works better with four players, but they started off with three, and then now they're down to two. <laughs> get a get a girl in the mix, and she could be like, "This is dumb," and it will break the spell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then the, the two guys. There's not really much else to tell other than the two guys just kind of face off each other, argue a little bit, compare they, weapons. Yeah. They start they they, they start uh, going down the the Renfest rabbit hole and they they bathe in Astroglide and they play the movie <laughs> in almost complete darkness. Oh yeah, yeah, and they, they you see them go into their 
they're another realm that we saw, you know, that we've been seeing throughout, you know, with the little squir- swirly lines and the the <laughs> fog. And uh, yeah. I thought I, I have to give him props for some other stuff like uh, the the when they're killing the demons in the fog and you can't really see it, but you know, you see like little blood sprays coming out. You know? Yeah. That's, that's, that's a more after effects uh, fun. Right. But I did like that too. You know, it's like, if you're going to use one of the effects, use it, use it to use it effectively. I guess they, they worked with what they had. Yeah. Yeah. They definitely worked with it. And I thought it was, I thought it was effective for the effects. Um, that were going on um nice but, nice meaty sound effect when you when they cleave the demons it, it could have stood to have more of that i would have you know like maybe chop up some some of the other ones or a, the, the, a big fault that this movie had is obviously they're they're killing real people when they're out there killing demons but all of the murders happen off camera the yeah. only one that even kind of happens on camera is between the barista and the uh, <laughs> fish head guy yeah that's true and yeah, I, I thought that was a. If they could have just added more of the killings, maybe just souped up some of the gore factor. I'm, I mean, I yeah. think it would have. I, I think it would have been a much more effective movie. I know it, a lot of movies decry, oh, we don't want to rely on the gore, we want to rely on the story. I was like, no, you need to rely on the gore for something like this. Some, yeah, so it's you know, like you know what you're working with, know what kind of movie this is. It's it's it's. It's like if you're making a big a beach bikini movie and you try to fill it with all this other bullshit instead of people dancing in bikinis on the beach. It's like we know what we're here for. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a horror movie. It's in the horror category. Spill some blood. Man. Yeah, yeah. A little blood was spilled, but uh, not not enough in my opinion. No, no. It's after Effects blood is is for cheaters. <laughs> it's much cheaper though. Yes, it is. Uh, then we have, you know, they're back in the, the... Of course, we see them flashback every once in a while to their interrogation in the, the police yes. room. And then the, the fi- they have, like, kind of a final battle between Neckbeard and Cool cool Dude. Yeah, it turns out they're both in the same jail together. And I was confounded why the police were questioning these guys so hard. Don't You don't need to put in the extra hours, guys. <laughs> You've got your guys. <laughs> And they're babbling incoherently. You're just helping their, and there's no lawyer in the room. I'd be like, we're not questioning these goofballs one minute more. You just get your lawyer in here. I, I beseech thee to get a lawyer. Yeah, and they're, they're not psychiatrists. You don't have to delve deep into their, their minds and wonder why they don't think it's a game and you think it's a game. It's like, let the, let the psychiatrists, let the doctors handle that. You just need to <laughs> do your basic interview. Yeah, and it, I don't think yelling at these guys is getting us anywhere. They're they're just <laughs> they're sticking to their story about being paladins. It, I, I I guess that, so. Both of the guys are you know, is he here? Give me my weapon. They keep insisting their weapons are given to them, and the, the cops. <laughs> there's multiple shots of the cops going no. No, you, you can't have this branch back to beat your friend to death. That's un- please, please let me beat my friend to death. But wouldn't it have been funny if they just transitioned to those guys fighting in a circle in some dark cell and everybody in the precinct is betting on who's going? <laughs> now, that no now that would now that is a that that is an ending I would have loved to have seen. It would have justified everything because the 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 ending scene that we get is so loud and almost unintelligible <laughs> <laughs> well the the trailer how the trailer ends with them yelling it's not a game it's a game it's not a game it's a game that conversation this tennis match of a conversation goes on for a comic amount just a comedic amount of time like they'll there's actually a pause in the middle like it's a game it's not a game it is a game it's not a game it's just a game and then they pause and you're like all right we're done with this and and this hack comedy timing bit goes by and then it's like it's not a game they start again i'm like okay god this is a game you think this is a game and yeah it's amazing yeah I, I just love that, you know, that it's not a game, it is a game, and the whole time I'm thinking, okay, so one of these dudes are going to get up and just start bashing people's heads in, or just start killing, and... The... There's going to be a resolution that us horror fans can kind of relate to in some kind of way. Yeah, and I was going to, I was waiting for that moment where he just kills the cops, and we're going to see a bloodbath maybe, and that'll be like the final scene, and, uh, but it ends with, with Cool Nerd yelling unintelligibly i i had to i had, i couldn't even understand what he was saying until like the last word he yeah was like, and you heard it in the you heard it in the trailer ah, 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 <laughs> game or whatever that's a good pterodactyl you've done son and, 
there's so much, you know, his head is shaking, he's so into it, and he's like, this is not a, and I was like, yes, this is not a game, now pick up that pipe and bash that cop's head in. Yeah, my heart breaks for the movie that they could have had, they could have had this big uh, Terminator level uh, swath of violence through the precinct, that's kind of what we needed to, as a payoff, like, pay attention to the masters, like, Takashi Miki, he might bore you for a lot of his movie, but you're gonna get a payoff in the end. Oh, you're yeah. gonna get a nice payoff, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, but nope, 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 BD, nope, nope. Yeah, <laughs> nope. we just get this yelling conversation. We get the yelling conversation. We end the the screen goes black after the screams. This is not a game. And roll credits. Yeah, yeah. And and they used every note of the fantasy pack audio that they bought from whatever uh, movie outlet. I don't know. I'm sure that it's clip art music in the same way that clip art, <laughs> clip art is clip art. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so would you, would you recommend this movie? Would you say? And as a petty form of revenge, it would be fun. Like if somebody <laughs> was annoying or, you know, just a poor guest drank all your beer. Yeah. You know, recommend that they watch it. <laughs> I think this is a, uh, I would recommend it only because it, I think nerds like us could kind of identify with some of the stuff in it. I, I like I said, we, we, yeah. we nitpicked the hell out of it, but overall, I've seen a lot worse. I had said, I, oddly, I didn't hate it. And, yeah. and that's confusing for me because I feel like I should feel some amount of contempt towards it. It was lazy. Uh, the <laughs> props looked like stuff they had laying around their apartment. Um, someone was exercising an amateur's mastery of editing and post-production. It just wasn't good, but I still did, couldn't hate it. Like, it was just like, there's 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 a good story in here somewhere. The, the idea of a plot device, like a haunted uh, board game is so compelling to me that I want to see somebody pull it off better. Now you remember the exercise Rocky routine they had, right? Huh? Oh, I do. I do actually, where they were kind of fake sword fighting with what, one another. They start off with uh, one guy was doing a lot of push ups, and the other guy was trying to do sit ups, but he wasn't exactly <laughs> getting to that point. <laughs> <laughs> my doctor says it's bad for my hernia. I was like, the exercise, I was like, do them crunches, bro. <laughs> yeah, come on, man. Put some effort in. But yeah, that's, uh, so that's 13 Demons. You know, if watch it with friends. Maybe you can get some good riffs off. Um, I, you know, I, I like I said, I I managed to enjoy it. I, then again, this weekend, I just watched A Talking Cat. So it's my... <laughs> barometer for good is totally not working. everything's whacked off oh well, that's not the right term everything's just gonna whack <laughs> well you can i don't know you're not gonna have a lot to look at at either movie but go ahead and give it a shot <laughs> yeah so that is 13 demons and that's right. so what do we have next up Next, we have an Indian film, the oh. first of two, by the way, both with the, the word 1920 in the uh, title. First one's 1920, and then the next one after that is 1920 London, I believe it's called. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this is uh, no offense to, uh, to to Indian people, but <laughs> your movies are often baffling, and I uh, this might be tough. Either that yeah. or it'll be magical. I'm, I'm transfixed any time I go to get Indian food and I look at whatever's on TV. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. This is this. I think this is where our true suffering is going to start. To tell you the truth, because it's going to begin because I've looked ahead and it's just like, okay. <laughs> The, the generally, and I don't want to, you know, like assume that this movie is going to be like that, but generally I find that the, the acting to be a little bit tough to take for our American sensibilities. There's no subtlety in anybody's <laughs> facial expressions in an, in an Indian feature, but eh, maybe I'll enjoy it. Yeah. I've already been told by my partner that there's no way she's watching it with me. <laughs> yeah, this is, this may have to be a multi-parter for me to just to get through, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so 1920 is up next and I can't tell you what it's about. We'll do that next week. It's a ghost story, but we will delve in knuckle deep next week oh god well <laughs> all right clay do you have anything you, uh, you want to plug at the end of this um you can check me out uh check out uh, hboys.com hboyz.com you leave out any of those letters you got yourself some gay porn and i <laughs> hate to entertain you more than you deserve how about you tell us about uh you know your new project well we got a i've got a new doom band out called stygian crown uh, look us up on facebook Twitter and Bandcamp and SoundCloud, all that crap. Uh, also, check out Cinematic Suffering on Twitter. We have, we do have a Twitter account. We haven't posted anything. <laughs> it's pretty much dead. 
we have two followers which is pretty much me and another account i think i <laughs> <laughs> i don't think i'm following it yet either it's 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 a slow boil we're we're getting there we're working on artwork for it it'll uh you know this thing's going to grow yeah. i have every faith that it'll it'll be cool you just kick these episodes out and hopefully I'm just this next. I I really have a bad feeling about this next couple of movies. So <laughs> I'm gonna mentally prepare myself for them. Um, uh, just uh, take a look at the trailer, and uh, your fears will be justified. Oh God, okay, I'll do that. <laughs> All right, now uh, I guess that's it. Yeah, I think so. We appreciate y'all listening. All right, episode two of Cinematic Suffering is in the bag. Peace.